Okay, so today I'm finally going to build the uh, class 2 signal generator for doing uh, instrument cluster repair on the GM instrument clusters. Just generate set class 2 signal to uh, simulate a uh, coolant temperature, fuel, uh, oil pressure, and uh, trans temp. Uh, it, it can also do the uh, transmission position and a couple other things, but uh, in this video I'm just going to show you how to do uh, do those. It, it's going to be a little bit vague, um, just going to kind of skip through pretty quickly of me actually building the thing. Uh, and then in the end I'll have a couple minutes of showing all the different schematics and pinouts you'll need for it, so that way... Um, that way uh, you don't have to go find them all. You can just pause on those and look at them uh, if you need. Uh, the easiest way to do it though is to just go find them and print them out so that way you can lay them all out and have them to flip through. But that way you at least have these available to you. You don't have to go seek them out. And uh, the great thing about this box is even though I'm making it with the uh, ECU out of a 2000 and I say you got it out of 2004, 2005 Silverado. Um, it'll work with uh, the class 2 signal coming out will work with a uh, trailblazer it'll work with uh, the older the 99 to 02s uh, pretty much anything that uses class 2 in this time frame uh, it, it'll work with so there's a nice feature of it uh, one thing this one will not do is it won't do the voltage gauge uh, through class 2 you need a BCM to do that the uh, I didn't get grab the BCM at the junkyard and Honestly, for just one gauge, I, I just didn't care. I was not going to go do that. So, uh, yeah, let's get to this. It's going to be kind of quick going through me putting it together. Okay, so first I'm going to show you how to depin these and take the pins out. So, you got two little tabs here on the side. Just push in. And then push the other one in. Pull up at the same time. If I can get it. I got it hooked up to some stuff, so I'm fighting all those connections in there. All right, so then you just take your little cover off, and let's see. We need to. I need to take off pin 61 here. This is on the green connector. It's a low reference for the ignition coil, so it's just something I don't need. So to depin that, you're gonna push up right here on this little tab right here, and then just kind of take your finger or another screwdriver or something, push up gently, so that way the lip isn't stuck, and then push down and pull out with the other hand and it'll come right out so there goes one wire we don't need so it's just so you have an idea of how these are sitting in there Let's see if I can get it to focus there we go so it has two little balls here and it, it grabs on at either end of it so that way it can't push in further or pull out so they're pretty easy to take out um, you can do it however you want really I'm choosing to depin as I find that I don't need them. Uh, you might, it might be easier to just depin the entire thing and then put them back in as you need them. They go in just as easily as they come out. You don't have to pry real hard up on this. You don't have to pry real hard up on the bottom of it to get it to slide out. So uh, if you're fighting with it really hard to get out, you're just not doing it right. So um, yeah, it, it took me a couple of minutes to really figure out exactly how to get them in and out um, so they're really not that bad it, there's a lot of wires that you're gonna take off of here cuz you know you don't need any of the ignition coil stuff you don't need any of the um, fuel fuel injector stuff you don't need any of the AC stuff um, so you can just go ahead and deep in all of that um, I'm not gonna go one by one how to deep in it I mean if I did that the it would be a two hour long video of just deep inning the instrument cluster but I'll have all of the uh, diagrams and stuff so that way you can just go through and figure out what you need what you don't need um, based on that so um, I'm gonna get back to depinning this I just wanted to show real quick one so you got an idea of how it's done so I'm gonna go ahead and depin all the rest of the stuff for the ignition coils get it out of my way because I just don't need it I'm trying to get this to be a little bit less of a spaghetti mess make it a little easier to figure out what wires I need so front panel here I just got this scrap piece of metal did a really crappy job cutting it. it's nice and wavy there uh, but I put uh, four holes in it uh, you know water temp I mean, you can put them however you want in there but I'm just doing water temp and it'll have oil fuel 
and trans temp on these three. Uh, I, I've left room for more ports on here. I'll probably eventually add some switches for the different positions for the uh, transmission position sensor. Uh, not something I'm going to wire up right now for that. I'll probably just end up doing a, uh, a ground, uh, well, I'm sorry, not a ground. I'll just set it in park, which is two of the wires plus ground makes park. Um, but yeah, let's just, uh, let's get started on this. So this first one here, I'm using a 10K potentiometer for the water temp. First wire that goes to it is the uh, low reference, so we'll go ahead and put that here. It doesn't really matter. This this one, you're not actually using it as a voltage divide. You're using it just to show a level of ohm resistance. So it's not too important what order you put them in. So let's get this one on there. Go ahead and tin this wire.
Alright, so here are the uh, pinouts and diagrams that I promised. So, it's gonna. Some of the notes uh, in here you can ignore, but uh, this 5 volt reference here is for the oil pressure. Um, got some highlights here. That's, uh, that's the low reference for yellow and black was, uh, I believe, the transmission temperature, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, well, you'll be able to see when we get to the schematic. The low reference for fuel. I highlighted some of the grounds. I didn't get them all, so definitely uh, make sure you're paying attention. Hopefully, this stuff all comes out pretty clear in the uh, final. Let's zoom this in some. So yeah, these are for your coolant. This is the first page of connector tube. Some of these marks, just ignore them. Still on connector two. Should be the last page for it. Here are the diagrams. So let me zoom out so you can see the whole thing. That way, if you pause the screen on it, uh, y'all probably won't be able to read it though. So let's go ahead and zoom it back in. Give you half this page there. And that should be your other half. Like I said, I'd definitely recommend uh, getting on Google, finding these, and printing them yourself. But here they are, just in case you have a hard time finding them. Plus, they got some notes written on them for me using them. I do have really poor penmanship. So over here is your park reverse neutral switch. the final product uh, just left the top sitting on top here so we got our ECU in here with the uh, modified harness with a couple of potentiometers the uh, banana connectors for putting in our uh, voltage in and then voltage back out to go down to the cluster and then our uh, our fifth one up here in the middle is the data and you got your potentiometers I just took a sharpie to mark which ones they were and then I have a OBD2 port over here on the side so that way I can hook up scan tools and uh, uh, maybe your uh, Tech 2 stuff like that to it. And then a little bus here so that way I can just tie in, you know, the like 50 grounds and positives uh, in easily. And then these loose wires that I left connected that I didn't depin, they are all for the uh, Prindle, uh, well, for the... Um, transmission position sensor. I'll probably in the future add some uh, toggle switches so that way I can do the different modes for the Prindle screen. Um, so, and then to do, uh, one of the things you could have done with this is you could have uh, plugged in a um, signal generator to generate your uh, RPM and speed and then it would send a uh, I mean, it, it, it'll send a message for it, but the instrument cluster doesn't listen to the um, class 2 signal that says the speed and stuff. That That's just not used by the instrument cluster. It does exist, like scan tools can read the speed and RPM through the port, um, but it doesn't do anything to the cluster. So there's no point in hooking up your uh, signal generator to the ECU. You'll just hook it up directly to the, um, to the instrument cluster for the O3. 
three and up stuff, it's pin uh, five and four, I believe. Um, one's green and white, the other's white. Uh, that's going to be your RPM and speed. Uh, if you have this really cheap uh, signal generator, this one, uh, although it's a 5 volt signal generator, it's actually going 2.5 volts up and 2.5 volts below, and these instrument clusters won't respond to that square wave. So you'll need to make something like this, which is just a uh, NPN transistor. Uh, I put a little gate resistor on there just in case, and then you can uh, just switch to ground. Uh, it, basically, you just take the signal from this and make it a switch to ground, um, and that'll that'll run your tack and speedometer. So it's supposed to be a, a five to zero volt signal to run it. Uh, this just this cheap signal generator wouldn't work. Wouldn't do it. None of the modes would change it. You change the amplitude on it, and it doesn't do anything. And then it gets stuck in two volts too. So like it, it's. Uh, it's a really crappy signal generator. I would not recommend it. It's the cheapest one on eBay. I mean, not on eBay, on uh, Amazon that uh, comes in a case that's not like uh, just a circuit board. Uh, it's terrible. I would not recommend it. The switches on the back of it. Uh, yeah, see. So to turn it on and off, you have to uh, reach into the back. This uh, The front doesn't have a power switch. So, yeah, I, I really don't like this. This is not a recommend. It, it, it works. It actually gives it a, a nice clean signal. Um, the sine wave's all right, but the uh, the square wave and stuff's really good and sharp. Sawtooth waves. So, uh, everything comes out pretty sharp on there, uh, on the oscilloscope when you look at it. But, yeah, it, it just does 2.5 volts or 2 volts. Um, and it goes 2.5 up and then 2.5 below there's no real adjustment on there it's it's a pretty terrible one um but that's besides the point this was helpful i hope you learned uh how to build one of these yourself if you want to i'm sure you have all learned that i would make a terrible box builder and that uh, i should never take up a job in carpentry and uh, yeah, just give us a thumbs up so see you next time